What up friends, Liron here. Uh, hopefully you can still recognize me. I cut my hair and <laughs> trimmed my beard in the spirit of the upcoming uh, holiday. Not really, I did it regardless. Um, anyway, I have two really cool watercolor exercises to share with you today. And I think these exercises are really good as a warm up before painting uh, an actual scene or whatever it is you paint. But it's also good as a standalone painting session. So I really hope you like this, these ones. Uh, the first one is uh, just uh, sketching really lightly and then going in with one, uh, one color and uh, coloring using your intuition. And the second one is negative painting, which is meaning uh, painting around the figures that you draw. I think you're really gonna enjoy these ones. Uh, let's get straight to business. Okay, friends, welcome to the new setup. I hope it'll be better. Uh, now, I'm using the natural light from outside, so we'll give it a shot like this, and I'll learn from it if it's a good uh, lighting conditions or I should uh, turn on the light inside as well because I don't want too many weird shadows, so I don't turn it on now. Uh, so let's just begin with uh, the first exercise, and what this exercise entails is just drawing <clears throat> lots, lots of figures. Sorry, my voice is a bit uh, out today. Um, so just drawing uh, a lot of small figures and uh, just people and then going in and filling them with uh, one color, monochromatic. So um, let's begin by just drawing people and I will share the reference pictures with you and but you can go ahead and draw from whichever picture you want. The, the key is don't draw them too big because that'll um, I, you don't want to feel like you have to go very detailed with the watercolor. So you uh, deliberately should draw them smaller. Uh, the recommendation I saw was like uh, five centimeters tall something like that seven something uh, uh, to that in that direction so uh, let's begin I'll do the drawing in time-lapse and you can draw in the same time as me use the same pictures use different pictures let's get to it Okay, so uh, one thing I haven't mentioned and I want you to take to heart here, it's really important, is draw as simple as you can. Um, I, I've mentioned it uh, when I just said to draw them really uh, small, but uh, you really don't want to get into too many details. You can sit down and try to, you know, do the gesture of each person and really go for it, but there's no need to, but because we want to develop spontaneity with the watercolor. So this is great, just, you know, quick sketches, barely see the the clothing uh, items or whatever it is they're wearing, just very light. Uh, you can do it even smaller, even less detailed than that. So what I'm gonna do now is mix some uh, paints and I'll just show you how I'm going over them and coloring them monochromatically. So let me just prepare a few stuff and we'll get to it. Okay, so as you can see my palette is still a big mess from yesterday and I left it like that deliberately. I'm usually not working in such a messy manner, but the thing is I do want to try and use the colors I already have on my palette um, just to see if I can produce interesting uh, gray sky and stuff like that. Anyway, let's begin with just painting that first uh, figure here. And the thing is what you want to do is you want to be really free with the colors you use and not to worry too much about uh, what it looks like. Uh, so maybe choose one color that you want to work with. I'll go with this uh, weird orange-red <laughs> combination that I have here. Uh, when doing this in the past, I actually used one uh, single paint and now I'm using a mixture, but that's fine. So uh, what you want to do is sort of just imagine if light's coming from somewhere and just go for it. Or you can uh, paint based on the clothing items that the figure is wearing. So for me, I'll do a mix of both. I'm just going to uh, sort of paint this in. And from the reference, I saw this was like a 
um, a code that had this uh, furry area here. So I'm just gonna skip that because it's a little lighter. And I'm gonna leave some highlights on top of the bag. Uh, she has a backpack. And what you wanna do is basically focus on not painting everything. That's the heart of this exercise. Um, not painting everything and not trying to be too accurate with your details. So I'm gonna leave this area here completely empty because uh, her pants are lighter. I'm just gonna leave it like that. That's it, we're done with the first um, first figure. I can perhaps call her the hair a bit. And that's it. No need to meddle with it any longer. The thing you want to train yourself to do is to just do it in one go and not worry too much, okay? Uh, this is the most important part of this exercise. So let me do one more. We'll do a couple uh, in real time and then I'll go and do some in time lapse for you. Um, and the lighting has improved <laughs> as a to celebrate the painting stage, so that's a good thing. Okay, next one. So from what I see, his shirt is very light, so I'm not even gonna touch it. Uh, he has some um, uh, hair here, uh, beard perhaps, and you can see how just suggesting these details already does some part of the work. Let me zoom in a bit. Okay, so you can see how just putting in some details sort of does the trick here. Um, let's do the backpack handles and maybe suggest some of it because it's a very large backpack. Let me mix a little bit of a darker paint. Uh, he is holding a camera in his hands. So that's the camera. Like that. Uh, darker pants, so I'm just gonna paint them in. And the shoes, just indicating them. And this is something I really took to heart. Uh, from uh, Joseph Zbukvich, I think he says that he's a great watercolor artist and he says uh, to really uh, try and get as much as you can with as the least uh, number of strokes possible. So I'm really trying to do that now because I don't want to, I want to develop this ability to not paint stuff that look a bit overworked. Um, so uh, this is my goal here, let me mix a bit more color. Okay, so for the figure here, again, she has uh, she has her hair here, something like that. Uh, the camera gear, everyone's wearing cameras <laughs> uh, in this picture, her feet, and you want to get them again, if possible, with one brush stroke, no more. Even if it's not as accurate, at least it's more spontaneous, you see? Um, <clears throat> and your brain sort of knows how to complete the information and just um, read the character well. Um, let's do a few in time lapse and maybe come back to do one last uh, one, like in real time. Okay, so we've done a few in time lapse and hopefully you can see the power of suggestion. You kind of don't need to worry too much about the exact details and you just uh, go for what you see. So what I don't know what she's holding, like is it an umbrella? Is it something like, I don't know, uh, this guy as well, is it a bag? It doesn't matter, your brain can decipher it. Um, and when it's part of a bigger picture, you really don't want to uh, get too bogged down in those kinds of details. You want to be able to sort of hint them and just continue on. So for this uh, last one here, the couple, I'm going to try and do that in real time as much as possible. And because I did a bit of a larger uh, painting, let's jump ahead and try to actually um, do it like uh, in, in many perhaps multiple uh, pigments here, multiple colors. So I'm gonna start with a blue for the hat. And the key here is again, I'm trying to be really, um, really uh, light and sketchy still. So what I'm gonna do is just paint it in one go without worrying too much about uh, colors mixing, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna paint his face now. Just like that, you see? 
No need to make a separation between the two. That's the whole thing. You want to let the paints flow together. And here we have uh, his hand holding her hand. Uh, we have another hand holding the paper bags here. Now, for this area, uh, he's he has this uh, another bag he's holding on his uh, back. So that's here. And his shirt is sort of open down the middle, so I'm just gonna get that uh, texture of the shirt under the white shirt. And you can see it already kind of builds up the character. Um, <clears throat> his pants are darker, but they have this blue tint to them, so I'm gonna get that now. And back with the color for the body itself. Um, one thing I also didn't mention is make sure to use a small brush for this one, like a size 8 uh, will be perfect. Uh, you don't need more than that. Uh, actually it's better to avoid smaller brushes than that uh, because if you use them uh, he's barefoot, <laughs> for the sake of this example. Uh, if you're gonna use a um, darker, uh, sorry, a smaller brush, you're gonna be tempted to fill in the lines, and it's not the purpose here. You don't wanna fill in the lines. You want to be able to actually um, paint instead of draw. Sort of draw with your paint, okay? <clears throat> now, we have some darker um, values for her hair and again I'm gonna let it all mix together and her dress is sort of a it has this I'm gonna add a little bit of red to get this dark dark uh, brown purple thing let it all mix together the thing is and it's totally okay to let it mix because if we would uh, do another layer on it we can definitely pull this together and make the separations we need uh, but the first layer you let it all mix and it's something that just recently i started to understand like uh, let the first layer mix uh, completely don't be afraid of it and so i started uh, applying that already uh, pants again let it mix, just pull with as few strokes as possible. If you can uh, suggest something with less strokes, it's better uh, for her uh, legs. And I'm uh, going to mix it with a little black just to create her shoes here. And what you do want to try and do is anchor them to the ground. So what I'm going to do is uh, add a bit of shadow for both of them, like that just so that you can see them uh, anchored to the ground in some way. So friends, just wanted to show you real quick, uh, once you add another layer, it's really easy to bring out the separation between the different parts of the characters and add some more details like the sandals and uh, uh, the bag here, some more shadows to indicate the shape. This is a really good for the first layer, you don't really have to worry about separating the washes, just let it all blend together and then you can come back again and do this. And also, uh, notice how adding a background really made the bright area here pop, okay? So just wanted to share with you, I'm, uh, I, I regret not recording it, but I did it really quick, so... Okay friends, on to the next exercise. And I don't want this video to be super long, so I'm gonna cut straight to the chase. Uh, this exercise works on negative drawing, meaning drawing around characters. So what you wanna do is be able to train yourself to actually paint around your figures. So, um, <clears throat> sorry, in the beginning, <clears throat> oh man, my voice. <laughs> so in the beginning, uh, you wanna draw something very simple like that and just train yourself to paint around it and next when you uh, feel like you have more control and you're better at it you want to be able to just uh, go with the flow and do that on the spot with no uh, preparatory um, painting or uh, sketch okay uh, so I'm just gonna take some very strong paint here because it's best to do this with lots of paint and uh, maybe you can hear the wind in the background or outside because the weather is really not that good. By the way, I will change to a 
feel like I'm kind of all over the place. I will change to a larger brush, specifically for that, size 12. And even though this painting is considerably still small, I do want to do it with a larger brush because that's the whole point. You want to train yourself to be able to paint around areas even with a larger brush. Um, so let's just go ahead. Um, and I'm not concerned about filling this uh, square too perfectly. Uh, I'm not sure, some of you may know that I kind of don't like to be accurate at times. <laughs> Uh, it can be partially because of, oh sorry, that's my phone, it can be partially lack of skills, but also uh, I think I'm really impatient. That's my, uh, my main issue, I think, is uh, impatience, actually. Uh, if there's one thing I'd want to improve, uh, it's not necessarily even with my art, it's more of my ability to be more patient, because it is important when painting watercolors, you want to be able to wait until a wash dries, before you go in again and you want to, uh, you just want to be patient, you know, uh, even on a macro level of just, you know, not worrying too much and understanding that with time your skills will improve. So if there's one thing I would like to improve, it's actually that, just being more patient. Now, what I'm trying to do here is get around these characters with, again, as fewest, uh, the fewest number of brush strokes possible, just to indicate their shape. Now, one thing that's working kind of against me here is that I painted, I drew the, the sketch way too dark, than, like darker than I would usually, uh, just so you can see it, because I was afraid you won't be able to see it, and it kind of hurt my spontaneity here, I'll, I'll admit. So it's, it kind of feels like I just colored around it. So uh, hopefully in the next square, which is going to be done completely uh, with no guidelines, perhaps I'll be able to uh, use more of my uh, intuition or whatever it is and just paint around some uh, invisible characters. So let me get my paint a little darker here. Anyway, yes, we got it. So um, painting. And at some point, I'm just doing an indication for a head and painting around it. Now, I have no idea what will come out of it. And this is the magic here. I really don't know. This is like an upper body or whatever. I want to have another character smaller here. Maybe a kid or something like that. So that's one character. And the second one's like that. See, I'm making kind of a gap here between the legs. And this kid has no feet, so <laughs> I'm just gonna get some of the paint off like that. And sort of try and get something. Yeah, you can see it's... that's the whole point. Um, he has no legs, unfortunately, <laughs> in this um, quick painting. Um, that's fine. Hopefully you can kind of understand it. It is two figures, in fact. Uh, let's move the paper a bit and continue. So I'm going to try to make another one on the fly and redeem myself <laughs> of my previous failed attempt. Uh, let's start here again. Sort of a shape for the head, middle body, and just the bottom. Like that. And another one here. And hopefully you can see this sort of taking shape. Um, looks like two people, I think. <laughs> um, and you want to study like the basic uh, proportions, stuff like that um, as well because it is important to kind of understand uh, the, at least the basics, you know. I think uh, studying anatomy is really important, actually, and um, I'm definitely not where I want to be with this. Um, I, I do have a basic ability of uh, figure drawing and gesture drawing, but it's something I definitely want to work on. Uh, so I think they have a small dog here running with them. <laughs> And yes, you don't want to overdo it. Now I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, so here are the features. Don't touch it. That's the whole point. Because the moment you're going to touch it, you you will hurt the spontaneity here. Uh, let's do one last uh, of this exercise. Try maybe get a couple in or something like that.
Okay, so this is the end of the second exercise. And as you can see, it's just really simple and fun and it really gets your uh, creative juices flowing sometimes. Uh, what I like to do is sometimes go back after it dries and sort of start adding some more details. Um, it's really optional, you don't have to do it, but uh, if you want to, you can. So I might uh, just go back and uh, maybe paint like the head here and maybe the pants are a little darker something like that and maybe for this character he's wearing something that has stripes on it you know and the kid here she's wearing a dress and there you see you have it it's like now this one looks like a dress maybe so i might add one more stripe here and you can see how it works, like, um, uh, let me zoom in so you can see this actually. So I literally indicated nothing here, you see, and it's just, it looks like maybe a man and a woman uh, in a dress and their kid. I don't know, so that's the whole point of this exercise. So uh, let me wrap up this video real quick. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the two exercises and I really hope you liked the new setup as well. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Snapchat and Instagram. And I really feel like I have to say I'm working on so many products uh, in, the, in this month that I feel like I have less time for YouTube, but I think I am producing enough videos. Uh, but I do want to apologize if it feels like I'm, uh, I'm focusing a bit on other areas. Uh, I'm launching three new courses uh, this month hopefully and one of them is going to be hosted on my website which means a whole lot of work and two others will go to Udemy probably um, so there's that uh, thank you for sticking around I hope you get a lot of value from my content here on YouTube and I want to say thank you so much thank you thank you thank you you are awesome I hope to see you again in another video really soon until then take care